research for, for the show, yeah, I was looking at what else is on the market. Uh, some of the footage you shared uh, where in Asia, they seem to be as far as adopting it as one of, a, a, a way of treatment, at least for like the health spas and wellness and in clinics, they're, they're kind of further along in hydrogen treatment. Um, but I, I, you know, I don't think they have what, what your system has as far as hydroxy. Uh, now, just as, you don't have to go into details, but d is the difference between um, normal electrolysis, which some of these machines are probably doing, or most of them, uh, and the, your system because of, of the, the amount of time you spent with this level of research, is it, is it the circuitry that is breaking, breaking the, the, the water, the, the way it's breaking the water? Is it down to the electric circuitry that's, that's, uh, that's making the difference? That's a really good question. There's, there's a, a huge number of factors that, that go into electrolysis design and what you're going to do with it. Mm -hmm. The basic concept uh, comes down to whether there's a membrane or not. Okay. So if you are, uh, if you have a membrane mm -hmm. that's separating the electrodes, that in this case we're going to call it the cathode, which is the negative, and the anode, which is positive, you have a membrane that's separating those two, then you're not going to get Brown's gas. You're going to get... Uh -huh a hydrogen off your cathode and oxygen off the anode. And that's the traditional electrolysis, uh, Faraday electrolysis, if you will, mm -hmm. that has been done for a couple hundred years. And that, that is the normal. Okay. okay. And, yeah. and even when they're using what's called SPE SP, uh, uh, technology, solid polymer elect electrolyte, it essentially is a membrane. Yeah. So they're getting the oxygen off one side and the hydrogen off the other. And that, uh, you can't make Brown's gas that way. It doesn't yeah. make the electrically expanded water. The electrically expanded water is only made in electrolyzers that don't have a membrane. So now we have two electrodes, your mm -hmm. cathode and your anode, mm -hmm. which is uh, negative and positive, and it's and the oxygen is being generated off the uh, anode and the hydrogen is being generated off the uh, cathode. Mm -hmm. and right in the middle, where my nose is, <laughs> right in the middle of the cell, Mm -hmm. there will be a third gas being generated. Now, normally uh, that's where, where the membrane would be. But yeah. when the membrane is there, it interferes with this effect. And this effect is when the anions and cations are going back and forth across between the plates to, uh, to balance the electrolysis. Some of those electrons are mm -hmm. attaching onto the water and the water is expanding and, and becoming the plasma form of water, which is electrically expanded water. Mm -hmm. And so it only happens when you have a, the, no membrane. Fascinating. Now, now, the most efficient type of way to do it has to do with plate spacing and electrolyte density and temperatures and waveforms and, and pulsing, mm -hmm. yeah. all yeah. kinds of things that a person gets into. Uh, but, the, but the basic idea is that you have to have no membrane between the electrodes. Thank you.